This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. Well, thank you for joining us today. I'm James Just. We have Richard Fields on the other end and friend of the show, John Cameron, bouncing around in the middle over there. All right, gentlemen, this has been an interesting week. We've got taxes, SCOTUS picks, um, the election potentially being up in the House. So let's start with this Trump taxes. They just came out. It's Monday. They just came out today. It's Trump. They say Trump paid something like 750 bucks in taxes last year or in 2017, I think is what they said it was. Mm -hmm. You know, isn't that a more say more about the complexity of our tax system where you can hide that much money somewhere? Than Joe it does? has the best response possible. She said, I think uh, we should limit income tax to $750 as a start. <laughs> we'll see. I, I, there we go. I think that's great. And I think that that speaks to, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, Richard, because you were around when they, when income taxes first came out. Um, the, um, <laughs> when they first uh, came up with income tax, they wanted to put a limit on it of like 5% or 3% or 10% or something like that. That it so the taxes like could one, go, 1 or something. Yeah, it started at 1%. So taxes could go no higher. And the objection to that is that the, the people who are involved in said, no, 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 no. You tell the government they can take 10%. They'll go out and take 10%. We never want to give them permission to take 10%. So that initial decision that was made not to put a cap on income taxes because nobody had the guts after that to do it. If they just said, well, hold on. Well, why don't we do it? Why don't we, we say it can only go up to 5%, you know, for 50 years and then 10% in the next 50 years. And then uh, of course, then there'd probably be state income taxes and sur taxes and all the rest of that. But, but still it's, you know, our, our, the, the the problem, well, problem is, is that government creates problems, doesn't fix them. But uh, you know, government's always screaming, it needs more money, needs more money, needs more money. It it, it it's not a it's not an income problem. I uh, you I'm sure Richard and I both know people making a quarter million dollars a year who can't they're living paycheck to paycheck and have a hundred thousand dollars in credit cards. The problem is a spending problem, not a revenue problem. And yeah, and the, the whole thing about is Trump paying at least seven hundred fifty dollars. I'm sorry, yeah, I interrupted. Go, no, finish. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'll probably piggyback on your answer here on that. The the problem with you know the, the whole brouhaha about Trump only spending seven hundred fifty dollars it just demonstrates without any question whatsoever that Trump isn't had never has been a billionaire. He's simply somebody who is living on credit cards to use the uh, to use an analogy, living well on credit cards, and uh, uh, you know he's a he's a clown pretending to be a billionaire. There's there's no there's no there there as far as wealth. Well, I think I think Forbes Forbes does a pretty good job, and they say we're, he's worth a couple of billion. Um, but I don't that, think so. You know the, I don't problem, think so. The problem is is if you have if all your assets are in real estate. And uh, I don't know if that um, we're talking net worth here, and he, his assets may be in world real estate, but the liabilities on those assets outweigh the uh, the assets. Yeah. That's the problem. Well, I mean, it could be, and and the uh, this, but the you know the fact that the tax code is so discombobulated, and you know you can you can have a, a ton of revenue, uh, and um, you know if you're developing something. Your during the development phase, uh, like right now, all these I guess his golf courses and one of his hotels are way upside down, and they've got some big notes coming due in the next four years, uh, and nobody's going to hotels and all the rest of that. I mean, things that can turn it upside down, you know. The um, but then you know he might end up having a hundred million dollars in revenue the next year. And there's yeah, tax. I, I, I make no apologies for him for him being a, a clown pretending to be a billionaire. That's what he Well, is. no, and I'm I'm not. It sounds like I'm an apologist for Trump. I'm just there are there are lots of businesses that that make you know that are cyclical, and when you're investing in money, um, you know that's the thing about running a small business. Uh, you know, you you have to show to the IRS, you have to show a profit every once in a while, or else they they say no, you got a hobby, you don't have a business because you're not making a profit. But a lot of businesses are, in essence, hobbies for, uh, you know, 
up to 10 years, but I think the IRS rules are, are you got to show a profit one out of five years. So you're going to have tax less carry forwards. You're going to have, um, you know, investment in, uh, was it 178 investment in plant and equipment that you can write off immediately like computers and furniture and offices and, you know, all the rest of that stuff. So the tax code is, well, he has a hotel then. hobby then. Yeah. He's got a hotel hobby. And then when it makes money, he'll have a hotel business. And if it doesn't make money for long enough, it could be a hotel hobby. So, uh, but I, th I'm also, I'm, I'm not surprised by the lamestream uh, media's lack of questions as to, wait a second, how did the New York Times get this tax return? Oh, they, yeah, that's, yeah, that's huge. Uh, it's not somebody, part of the, somebody leaked somewhere, yeah. probably illegally. And, you know, why are we not concerned about uh, the leaks of private information when it's when when it's uh, uh, Trump's ox that's scored. Well, and I, uh, you know, just like the, there's there's a uh, yeah, because the only place I understand how you could figure out federal taxes by access to state taxes, and my guess is is that somebody in the state of New York, because you know when you file, at least in California, I assume that New York is the same way. You basically transfer over all the information on, on income and expenses from your federal return, which you do first, to your state return. And then some things are allowed at the federal level that aren't allowed at the state level and vice versa. So somebody in the state of New York has access to a lot of the information that's on his federal return. That means that somebody illegally in the state of New York uh, accessed somebody's private and confidential financial records, which aren't part of, uh, they aren't part of the public record. Um, the income you make when you're a government employee is, but the income you make as a private citizen is not. And then they released that to the, to, I guess, the New York Times. And we don't even know if it's correct. And, and the other thing is that the, the biggest problem Another big problem, and this thing is rife with problems, um, that financial reporting is so bad um, in many uh, mainstream or lamestream newspapers that I jokingly said in one of my books that, you know, um, a lot of business reporters don't know a per kale sheet from a balance sheet, and they're just they're just ignorant. They don't know what they're talking about. And they don't know what questions to ask of people when they get records. And then, you know, uh, but, but it really bothers me. It doesn't bother me that, that, that Trump's not as successful as he says he is, or he had a bad year, or he's got great tax accountants or tax attorneys. That doesn't bother me. What bothers me is that there's no hue and cry that this man's private tax return information was hacked by somebody and released and there is nobody being worried about that. There's nobody being upset about it and all the rest of that. And that upsets me. That upsets me. It really does. That, that you know, it's, it's uh, the lack of privacy in this, in, this, in this country is astonishing. And the lack of people's concern about the lack of privacy is non-existent. Anyway, that's just what I wanted to say. Well, to follow on that point, if, if they're willing to do that to the president, just think what they're willing to do to you. If, you know, if the president's tax returns are public knowledge, then so are yours because mm -hmm. of the most, you know, it's, there's no secrecy, there's no secrecy, but the tax issue, I just don't, can't find myself much information to care, much yeah. energy to care one way or the other. Well, he got a low tax bill. Well, make the taxes simple so you can't hide your money places. That's kind of my yeah. solution to this whole problem. It's, you know, well, no, not, the, solu the solution is get spending under control so you don't need a damned income tax. Yeah. You don't have to have all of this, all of this, uh, all of this uh, uh, goofing around with uh, the tax code. Well, or or or, or you, you just want to pull some wild, both. wild thought out of your brain, go to a flat tax, and then, you know. Uh, you want, uh, yeah, just go, go straight to no spending. That's that's the okay. solution. Well, no, I, 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 I know, Richard, but I don't think you're ever going to go straight to no spending. You have to do it in baby steps. Little spending, I should say. Little, just, little, you know, little, just to qualify yeah. that a little bit. But, yeah, but, and I, you know, being the radical that I am, you know, I mean, what was the cry tax, the no, no uh, taxation without representation. I'd like to see it change to no representation while ta without taxing, you know, you, so fine, you know, you can, you can, make, <laughs> you can make a choice, you can make a choice to, to not pay taxes, but for every uh, dollar in tax you pay, um, then you get, like one one millionth of a vote. I'm calling. Mm -hmm.
Ha, see, I wasn't the only one who forgot to drop my ringer. <laughs> yeah. So I, right. I don't. Yeah, we're right. Taxes are crazy. The the tax code is what as tall as the Empire State Building, and and it's uh, it's corrupt. If you look in it, Congress gives its friends tax uh, um, freebies all the time to the tunes of tens of millions of dollars, and they don't even list the name of the person. They they list the business entity and the address and all the rest of that. And it's basically just a tax gift. So uh, we're, we live in corrupt times, and I'm bored with it now. Yeah, well, yeah. Campaign, oh yeah campaign money buys something. Um, <laughs> so while we're talking about corruption, SCOTUS pick was announced, um, and I've just kind of blanked on her name. Amy Barrett? is that Amy, Amy Conan Barrett, yeah. Yeah, she was uh, Trump's pick for the Supreme Court, and that has brought up all kinds of interesting issues. You know, she's the attacker for what? Adopting two kids from Haiti, two black yeah. kids from Haiti. She, so that's somehow now our problem. And yeah. I don't know. This whole thing has gotten all very weird to me. I, you know, I don't follow much legal I didn't stuff. Even know that. She, so she, that's yeah. good for her. So that's for you, John. Yeah. She adopted, apparently she adopted two, two kids from, from Haiti. That's fine for me. She gets a couple kids out of who are, didn't have parents in Haiti. She gets them to the United States and they get to live a nice, decent life. I don't see what the problem is, but apparently that's racist or something. I have no idea. Ah, so the, 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 the Dems are saying helping out. Huh? This is going to get interesting. And, <laughs> and the, uh, I, I know they're there. What, what was annoying to me is I looked at the three sources that you sent uh, James, because surprisingly viewing public, I know you're going to be surprised. We actually on occasion do homework before you should <laughs> I know it doesn't sound like I do, but I do. And um, they're all uh, what I call lamestream media, and uh, and they're all talking about a conservative judge or a liberal judge or all the rest of that. And I thought that uh, um, Trump's statement—I don't know who's doing his speech writing now—was was, was uh, very short and very sweet, and basically said uh, it doesn't matter what uh, Amy, what what is her middle name, Conan, Conan or something like that, yeah. Barrett. And uh, she adopted some kids. Good for her. That's good. You know, I'll vote for her, even though I don't have a vote. Um, he said basically, it doesn't matter what what uh, uh, Judge Barrett or Miss Barrett believes, because uh, her job is not to judge based upon her belief system or, or something like that. Her job is to judge based upon the Constitution, what the Constitution says, and she will do that. And I thought, cool. So. I'm I'm a pretty big fan of the Constitution. Um, the, on the other hand, the, the 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 person she's replacing was a a very big fan of the living breathing Constitution, which reflected the current views of people and the needs and blah 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 blah. Basically, that meant you can act however you want to act, and yeah. So um, yeah, I, I would not come down quite that hard on uh, Justice Ginsburg. She was very good on uh, issues that were not economic issues, on the civil liberties issues, yeah. uh, women's rights, things like that. She did a good oh, no, job on a lot agree. of different things. She read the Constitution as written and and used it as her Bible on prop, on on uh, individual liberties, free speech issues, right, uh, women's rights issues, um, uh, racial issues, and all the rest of that, but then chose not to do so in other areas, uh, and that's that's fine. I'm not. I, I'm. I mean, she was she was passionate about it, and and you know she she wrote some wonderfully written opinions. I'm not and, and she was and she had she had the redeeming quality of being collegial. She and Scalia were opposite yeah. uh, uh, sides of the ideological spectrum, but were good friends. And uh, I think you got the I, you know I, I don't think we should be speaking ill of the dead. I do think that uh, what we should be looking at is the uh, rank hypocrisy of both Democrats and Republicans. The Democrats wanted to push through Merrick Garland uh, in the in a lame in a you know the last uh, in, in an election year under Obama. Now the and the Republicans cried foul. Now the Republicans want to push through a Republican nomination in the last in a lame duck, uh, uh, possibly lame duck uh, Trump presidency, and the Democrats are, are 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 crying foul. Well, they're both right. They're both. Uh, uh, absolute idiots when it comes to uh, being non-hypocritical. They're hypocrites mm -hmm. through and through. 
Oh, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll stand by the uh, Libertarian candidates uh, list of nominees uh, any day before I would look at any of the uh, nominees on the Trump or the uh, uh, Obama or the Trump or, uh, the Trump list or, or a potential Biden list. Yeah, well, the Biden Biden right. list I would just by definition have problems with because um, I don't think they know where to find the Constitution. Um, that my if I have got a problem with with Amy, uh, it, it is I don't know she hasn't done enough enough ruling. She seems to be. From what I understand, she's a brilliant woman and a great jurist. Uh, really understands the law, and she's she's a great communicator, a great writer. From what I understand, and all the rest of that. So I guess you know, there's there's you know, since it's not if a Supreme Court judge is supposed to be impartial, it it doesn't really matter, you know, if they've got a long track record to improve their their impartiality and their adherence to the Constitution. It's just that I kind of wish that she would have written more than like one or two opinions. So, you know, that, that would be my only problem. But I, um, it's, it's all part of the circus. And uh, in the long run, uh, you know, the nomenclature or, um, you know, really stacking the deck in their favor all over the place. And like, like Richard said, corrupt hypocrisy. So I think... Yeah, the I don't know if I got anything else to say about it. I don't know about, you know, corrupt, but I, I would certainly think you opened with corrupt, but I would certainly agree with Richard on, on hypocritical. Because um, it used to be not that long ago where, you know, a, a president mm -hmm. would choose a candidate for the Supreme Court, and if they were a good jurist, in other words, qualified, then um, they, were, they were approved like, you know, 78 to something or... I don't know how many senators yeah. there are. Like the hundred like ninety-eight zero. to two, ninety-six to yeah, zero, kind of and it didn't matter who was the president, or it didn't matter if it was a, you know, a senate. And then you know the, these two parties, which are so close together that you can barely slide a razor blade or a hundred-dollar bill and graft money in between them. Um, of course, that wouldn't buy anything. Hundred dollars, they'd laugh at that. Um, um, you know, have have made this fight so vicious you know to by the way to, is amy coney uh, barrett we make we need to make sure amy we have coney, coney. coney yeah, I didn't barrett. Think her name was yeah. coney amy coney barrett yeah. and uh yeah i mean what we have is, is a, an argentina like situation right now where if the republicans win the military industrial complex gets the spoils if the democrats wins the democrats win the education uh, medical uh complex they get the welfare get the spoils everybody's fighting to make sure that they don't lose out on the spoils and that's why uh, supreme court justices matter so much in the uh in the duopoly and that's that's the issue it's it's a matter of who gets to uh, divide up either the tax money or in today's day and age the borrowed money mm -hmm. the printed uh, money who gets divided yeah. up the, the and i think that's a it's a good point to kind of move on to the to, to the next subject is that there's so much hypocrisy that all these people really care about is con controlling their power, is ma and maintaining and what acquiring and maintaining their power. That's all they're really interested in. That's why the hypocrisy is so deep. If the shoes were on the other foot, we'd be hearing the exact same complaints out the other side. And speaking we, about complaints about the other side, this one you're going to have to explain to us, Richard. House Democrats are getting ready for a possible presidential election decision, but it doesn't seem to be completely in the Democrats' control now, does it? Yeah, it's interesting. If you have a uh, situation where you can't get a majority in the Electoral College, and you have to have a majority in the Electoral College in order to win the presidency, the election gets thrown to the House of Representatives. If it gets thrown to the House, the House votes by state delegation, which means that Minnesota gets one vote, Alabama gets one vote, New York gets one vote, California gets one vote. It doesn't make any difference how big the state is or how large their congressional delegation is. Each state uh, gets one vote. And it just so happens that even though the Democrats control more uh, congressional seats, a uh, couple hundred versus 190 something for the Republicans, the number of states controlled by Republicans is actually a majority, 26 to 22, with two states, Pennsylvania and uh, Michigan, being equally divided. Michigan's got one libertarian and uh, seven Republicans and eight Democrats. So they it's essentially divided. So the Demo the Republicans, if, if the election gets thrown to the House, uh, the, the Republicans win uh, by 
uh, having uh, control of a majority of House, uh, House seats. So Pelosi has figured that out and is making a huge push to make sure that congressional elections uh, move in a democratic direction uh, so that the, uh, the uh, House would vote Democrat as opposed to Republican. That's that's interesting. I actually didn't really know that that's how that process worked, but of course we haven't had to use it. So it's well, that was that was kind of the Gary Johnson plan back in in, in 2016. Uh, he was kind of hoping that he would be able to deny, uh, win New Mexico, maybe win Colorado, win a, win a Nus, Utah, I should say, win a couple of states, so that he would deny a, a majority in the electoral college to either uh, Hillary or uh, Trump and counting on the fact that there were enough anti-Trumpers and enough anti-Hillary people who would uh, say, you know, the pox on both their houses, let's vote for, uh, let's vote for Gary Johnson as, as the compromise candidate. Didn't work out that way because he, ne he never won enough uh, popular votes to win uh, the, the state or two that, that would be required to throw the house, uh, the election into the house. Now with, uh, with uh, the possibility of the, of the election getting thrown into the House is very, very slight this year, but uh, it's certainly a rallying cry for Nancy Pelosi to, to get more uh, money into uh, house, uh, house races in order to solidify her, her Democratic majority. Yeah, the idea that Nancy Pelosi, who uh, can't understand that she's not supposed to get a haircut and wear a mask, uh, is the the what second most powerful or third most powerful uh, elected political official in the country, depending on how you look at it. You might list all the seven Supreme Court judges, but they aren't elected. I had they're appointed. Um, it's just kind of frightening to me. But then you got Trump, and then you got Sleepy Joe uh, on the other side, and Pence. I have no idea what he's there for. But um, so it uh, it just I. I, th I don't I don't understand why the American people hasn't uh, American people haven't just uh, woken up and gone, man. These people aren't fixing any of the problems. <gasps> Wait, they're creating all these problems, but they they do, and and we keep electing them, thinking that you know the next person in is not going to be a thief. But if all you can pick from is a den of thieves, you're going to get a thief. Yes, you're going to get continually get den of thieves. Well, we move on. This one you're actually interested in. TikTok ban has been delayed. I know that it's, we'll kind of move off to something else now, but the TikTok ban, it was delayed, was supposed to be banned this weekend, but a judge has said that it can't be, the downloads are supposed to be banned off the app stores. They were delayed until November 12th when the whole thing gets kind of banned. It's all very strange for me. Mm -hmm. And I was on top of this TikTok thing before it became this big issue. I was part of a, I follow a, a, a guy who, this assembles these type of programs, these type of uh, apps for a living. And when he disassembled TikTok, he found out that it's much worse than most of them. And so I actually sent out before Trump and everybody got involved. I sent out to my friends and said, get TikTok off your phone because it's actually worse than most. And my me, my mother actually deleted TikTok off her phone. So I actually have an issue with TikTok as same with Trump. But having Trump ban it is kind of over the end, it goes too far. You just tell people to get this stupid thing off your phone, mm. I think is the way to so, do it. Yeah. Well, the question about TikTok that I would ask, and may, maybe your friend who disassembles these programs and looks at them would know, is whether, uh, well, we know, I think we can all agree that, that our government has some influence in a lot of high tech companies and they, they let the government have access to end user data, and they probably have a back door into some security. I mean, you know, there's supposedly the CIA had some startup money in Google. I wouldn't think that people at the CIA would be bright enough to do that, but you never know. And so we know that these big tech companies are in bed with our government. Or are they in bed more with the Chinese government? Because it looks like an awful lot of their apps, like the Huawei stuff uh, had a little spyware chip in it. Uh, a little chip built into the into the uh, the circuitry that allowed uh, somebody somewhere, you know, all the stuff that went out to control. I think it was the Huawei. The Huawei switches were for cell conversations. I think were they for cable? 
um, and they banned them in England and all the rest of that. So whether it's the Chinese government telling these people to do this or whether they just do it as a matter of course because they know information. I mean, there was the TikTok app was uh, um, copying everything off of somebody's uh, clipboard on your Apple before they fixed it. Uh, they were listening into conversations um, and so, you know, the question is, and I don't, I don't know. Well, let me get to the question so somebody can actually answer it. Is this government sponsored or is this kind of chicanery, just a common thing in the tech world? I mean, if you can get away with it, you get away with it. When you get caught, you go, oops, sorry. And who benefits? Does the well, government benefit or does the, does the app itself benefit? Well, what the actually looks one looked like is it was looked like it was trying to target the parents of children. So parents would be monitoring their children's TikTok account and it would allow the tick, the way the TikTok app was, was set up, it was monitor the parent's phone. And so they're essentially, they're, they're thinking it was looking for uh, tech secrets. They don't care about the average person. They're looking for the some some high level tech or high level government, eight, you know, official where they can get some information kind of uh, third back. So it's basically spyware. Then. Yeah, it, but it, whether it's government spyware or whether it's, Industrial spyware trying to get high level secrets. We don't know, but that's kind of you're guessing at that stage. I mean, I suppose there's probably someone in the government that knows exactly what they're looking for, which is supposed maybe why they've decided to ban TikTok and not some of these other apps. Hmm. Well, I know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, do, or do we do we have time to talk about the, the Google? You've got a minute. So go ahead. Google antitrust is coming to a head. Go ahead. Yeah, John. And, and I'm, you know, I'm normally I'm, I'm I'd like Richard's. So let me see if I can phrase this question. I asked for Richard's answers because I'm curious. Seems to me that that Google is is kind of a natural monopoly because their search engine was really good. But I know I try to, and I get lazy, go with DuckDuckGo because they don't track anything. But I'm finding more and more and more when I um, get, when I ask Google to find me something, it finds it, it doesn't find me what I want to find, it finds me what it wants to find. And I think that means that Google's time is is coming. What's your thoughts on this, Richard? Yeah, I, I, I don't think we need antitrust to, to uh, uh, cause Google problems. I think that uh, uh, they will be hoist upon their own petard at some point. They will get too brazen with uh, pushing uh, search results in the direction that they want uh, search results to go, and people will naturally go to DuckDuckGo or other uh, or Bing or other search engines. Uh, you know, they're providing uh, a service for free, essentially. All you have to do is watch their ads. So uh, there's no reason why the government needs to get involved. And that is all the time we have. I have already stopped using Google for search engines so because you don't get the results you want, exactly like John says. That's all the time we have. You can visit us at libertariancounterpoint.com to catch us up. Well, as soon as I update the website, you can do that. And we will talk to you guys next week. Thank you for listening. Thank you for having us on. I appreciate it. This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching The Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. We invite you to come again next week for The Libertarian Counterpoint.